So what I call basic hygiene factors like sleep, nutrition, hydration and exercise, everybody knows that we should be doing these things and it can be a bit like, yeah, yeah, of course I know I should sleep, but what we know now from the neuroscience research is so compelling that it really makes it more frightening to think about not doing those things properly. So let's start with sleep. Um, if you have disturbed sleep overnight, so we're meant to have six to eight hours of good quality sleep. There are some CEOs that say they only need four or five hours and they're sending emails at five in the morning and they've already been to the gym, but that's not okay for most people. So that's not something to be admired and followed. Most people need six to eight hours of solid, good quality sleep where they go through the various sleep cycles. If that gets disturbed at all, then you're effectively working with um, an apparent IQ loss of five to eight points the next day. Now, most people watching this video can probably still do a really good job with five to eight less you know, IQ points the next day. But an entire night's disturbed sleep, and that could just be a red eye flight, equates to one standard deviation loss of your IQ the next day. Most people couldn't operate on that, whether you're a lawyer, a sportsman, um, a coach, you know, giving service to other people, you're really putting that at risk. What we know that um, happens overnight is that there's a system called the glymphatic system. So not the lymphatic system in the body that cleans out our blood cells, but a system that cleans the cerebrospinal fluid that goes around our brain and spinal cord. And that washing process actually clears out protein plaques and tangles that, if allowed to accumulate, lead to dementing ill illnesses like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So, you know, I've done shift work as a doctor, I travel a lot, jet lag, you know, sleeping on planes. So I really try to ensure good quality sleep every night that I can. And um, the use of napping is also quite helpful. So a 20 minute nap is like literally plugging in your phone battery it will just give you a power boost. A 30 minute nap improves learning and memory in the brain. And a 60 to 90 minute nap improves learning, memory and actually encourages new connections to form which um, can unleash creativity in the brain. So that's why Google have nap pods, I think, in, in their business. It's not because they're asking people to work all hours, it's because they would like to think that people are sleeping enough and improving their creativity if, if they need to.